Hey everybody, this is Jason over at Grapevine Ham Radio. Today we're going to talk about how to program a TYT TH9800 quad band amateur radio. Um, I get a lot of questions about these, about how to program uh, the radio f and save uh, frequencies in, in the radio memory for repeater operation. So today we're going we're gonna to address that. Um, I sell a lot of these radios over at my website, grapevineamateurradio.com, if you can read my handwriting. Uh, since January of 2014, I've probably sold 70, 75 of these radios, and they've all been pretty solid. Um, I have had a couple come back for um, power output issues, uh, which of course I replaced, but um, I currently run this, uh, this radio in my own truck. Uh, driving around town, Dallas Fort Worth area, working a repeater operation on the two meter and four forty megahertz band. So it's pretty good radio um, for the price point. You can't really beat it. Uh, and uh, today we're just going to talk about some programming stuff. Um, as far as um, everything we talk about today is going to be in the manual. It's pretty good manual overall. The uh, translation from Chinese to English is is done well. It's got uh, pictures of the faceplate and the buttons. It'll explain all the buttons on the faceplate and on the microphone and um, all the menus inside the radio and how to do everything with it. So any questions that we don't answer today can definitely be found in the manual. Uh, we'll get into this here in just a little bit. But today we're going to talk about repeater operation. And these are the five things you need to make your radio operate a repeater. Uh, as, uh, as far as a, amateur radio repeaters go, that's what we're talking about today. Uh, you need the frequency, uh, the listening frequency, uh, the offset, which is going to be 5 megahertz for 440 and uh, 600 kilohertz for 2 meters. Direction of the offset, which is uh, going to be always positive for 440 and can be positive or negative for, um, for 2 meters. Your CTCSS tone which is your PL tone, and the tone encode or decode setting. So we'll talk about all that here shortly. Uh, first, I want to go over the uh, faceplate menu, the faceplate buttons, rather. I'm going to zoom in here just a bit, get a better look at the radio itself. So this radio is basically two radios built into one. You've got your left side, except this is the right side. You've got your right side and your left side. These two knobs on each side control the corresponding side of the radio, and these four buttons per side control the corresponding side of the radio. This is your menu button in the middle. There's just one. It controls whichever side you're on. And these are your six presets. The presets are cool because you can go in and save one and two sides of the radio. To You can set it to whatever you want to. You hold this button down. So you hear that beep, and then that preset for that side of the radio is saved into button A, or whichever button you want. So you can go, and you can start changing stuff around, and doing this, blah, blah, and say, oh, I want to go back to where I was, and there you go. We go back to where we were, just like the pre presets on your um, car stereo. So you've got six of those. That's one of the coolest things about this radio that I really liked. Um, I forgot to mention up front, uh, this radio is exactly like the Yaesu FT8900. Um, it's a quad band amateur radio. It does 10 meter, 6 meter, 2 meter, and 440. Um, on the left side is the only side that will do 10 and 6 meters. Both sides will do 2 meters and 440. I've seen some uh, emails come through on the Yahoo group that say, oh, my radio is broken. I can't get to 10 meters or 6 meters on the right side. Uh, that's by design. That um, is the same exact way on the Yaesu FT8900. Uh, this radio is pretty much the same. The faceplate menus are all the same as the Yezu. Um The menus inside of the radio, uh, the TYT actually has a couple more for customization type things, but for the most part, it's the same um, programming menus and buttons as a Yezu FT8900. Uh, if, if you take this video here and apply it to a Yezu FT8900, it'll work for programming that radio as well. Um, so this button, the top top corner button is your uh, channel selector button. If you're in uh, 
channel mode like we are now, it'll page through your channels. Go into memory mode. It'll page through you. Uh, it'll just change frequencies up and down. Same with this side. Um, whichever side of the radio is selected as your main is the side we're going to be working on. So when you key up, it's going to key up on this side of the radio. To change that, press this knob. Just press it down. Uh, this is your volume in, uh, volume selector right here, and behind that, you can't see very well in the video, but behind that is a, a, a knob for your squelch. Same on this side. This uh, is the power, the, the knob with the power indicator, of course, turns the radio off and on. Just like that. Again, that's your menu button down at the bottom. Uh, these four buttons here are the same as these four buttons here, corresponding sides. This is your low, the button that says low changes your power settings. This uh, radio has four power settings, low, mid-2, mid-1, and high. On low power, uh, for 2 meter 440, you're going to get about 5 watts. On mid-2, you're going to get about 10 watts on 440 and about 15 or so watts on 2 meters. Uh, for mid-1, you'll get 20, 25 watts on 440 and 30 to 35 watts on 2 meters. And on high power, you should be pushing almost 35 watts on 440 and almost 50 watts on 2 meters. It's going to vary depending on where you are within the band, but that's about, uh, that's about right. So the, the button marked low uh, will switch all that. The VM button stands for VFO slash memory. This will change you back between your memory menus. Your channel numbers are right there above the frequency, and that changes if you're in channel mode. Go back to uh, VFO mode, and it changes frequency when you turn the, the tuner selector knob. So that's that. That's the VM button. The HM button means home. Uh, I don't really use this a whole lot, but basically you can program this button to go to a certain VFO frequency. So if you want to scan VFO um, on a certain band, uh, 10 meter, 6 meter, 2 meter, 440, it'll also scan that 850 megahertz band and the 350 megahertz band. You can set your home button to when every, whenever, no matter where you are in the radio, you hit that home button and it goes to a, it goes to VFO on a certain band so that you can start scanning if you want to. Again, I don't, I don't really ever use that. And of course, scan does exactly what you think it will. SCN is scan. If we're in VFO mode, you hit scan. It'll start scanning through the frequencies. You can turn your channel selector left or right, and it'll start scanning down for left, up for right. Same thing if we're in uh, memory mode and we hit scan. It'll scan through all the saved frequencies. And when it gets to the end, it goes back to the beginning, just keeps going until it finds some activity. So that's the faceplate. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, the other cool part about this radio is the microphone. And, of course, the microphone has the, the, no, the numbers on it, so you can program your frequency. Uh, it's got a, a lock slider and a lamp slider. You can turn the... I don't know if you can see it or not. But no, you really can't see it in the video, but it lights up the keypad. It's useful for at night. You can page up and down, push to talk. The coolest part about the mic is that these P1, P2, P3, and P4 buttons that are right here at the bottom control some of the most commonly used menus. And you can change those in the menu as to what these buttons do. But I just leave them as default because they work pretty darn well um, the way they're set up. So I'm going to take this down so you can see the face of the radio. But when I hit the P1 button, it switches back and forth between sides of the radio. So if I'm driving down the road and I don't want to fiddle with my radio, but I got my microphone in my hand, I want to talk on the other side of the radio and just switch it back like that. P2 changes from uh, channel or memory mode, which is where we are right there with the 5 indicator. That's your channel 5. Back to VFO mode and back again. Of course, you can change over to the other side of the radio and do the same thing. Your P3 button is your encode. Encode decode, which is basically tone squelch, digital PL tone, and off. We'll get into this a little bit later, but this is one of the most common uh, things that people miss when programming repeaters. They don't have this encode turned on. So we'll talk about that in a bit. And then P4 will page through your power settings. So you can change power if you're talking on the radio, driving down the road, and somebody says, you know, you're getting kind of far from the repeater. 
turn your power up, a simple touch of the button on the microphone. Pretty easy. So, okay. So we said earlier that in order to operate a repeater, you need five things. So we're going to go back into VFO mode. And we're going to go up here to a repeater that's local to me. Um, let's go to... So, um, what you want is that your frequency of the repeater. Uh, repeaterbook.com is a great place to find repeaters for that are local to you, to wherever you are. Um, it'll tell you the uh, offset of the repeater, the direction, and the PL tone for all the repeaters. Um, you can also make comments on the repeater if you find something wrong. You can see comments that other people have made about your repeater. So the frequency is the first thing we want to set, and then we want to set the offset. Now the offset can be the offset on two meters is going to be 600 kilohertz, one direction or the other. That's going to be menu 27. So go into your hit your menu button and enchant, and page over to 27. And then tap this button right here, and we're already set to 0 0.60 megahertz, which is 600 kilohertz, which is the correct offset setting for 99% of the two meter repeaters out there. In order to get back, just press the menu button again. So our offset is already set, so we're good to go there. And then you want to set your direction. In this menu, it's called repeater modification. It's menu number 24. You go in here and you can reset, you can set this to, you can turn it off if you want to do simplex operation. You set it to minus or plus depending on what your repeater is. Um, again, that, that information will be about your repeater on repeater book. So once you get it to where you want it, you hold this, this push this button again and hold it down for a couple of seconds until it goes back to the menu and then it's saved. Go back into it, go back out of it, and we're back in the menu. We can exit the menu and go back into the menu as much as we want as well. So we've got the offset and the direction of the offset. We need our, our PL tone now. That's going to be menu... I'm sorry, I passed it. That's going to be menu number 30. Tone F like Foxtrot. And again, you, you're going to want to get this information from repeater book as far as whatever the PL tone is for the repeater you're trying to hit. You just change the PL tone in here by turning the channel selector knob. You can also uh, push the up and down buttons on the top of your microphone, which will change them. Once we find the one we want, hold this button down again and it saves it. And then the tone in code, which again is your P3 button on your microphone, This it's uh, also uh, menu number 31 on the faceplate. You want to set encode which most repeaters are going to be encode in other words they transmit a pl tone to the repeater but the repeater does not you don't have to put turn on tone squelch to hear the repeater uh, so most of them are going to be right there and you can save it just like that but if you want to turn on tone squelch encode decode is what you want and then some of the newer repeaters are using a digital pl tone and that's the setting you would want for that you can turn all that off if you're working simplex or if your repeater doesn't require a PL tone, CTCSS tone. CTCSS and PL tone are the same thing, interchangeable terms. So that's the five things here that we've got. We go back and we have our frequency. Our power is set to low. We're on the main band. Our offset is set to minus, and our encode is turned on. We're not hitting the repeater. That's okay. That repeater's uh, kind of a long way away. It's uh, it's probably, you know, sometimes that repeater doesn't even work very well. Hold on, let me try another one. So, this, uh, this repeater's in the 147 megahertz uh, range, so we're going to have to change our offset to a positive. Oops, held it down too long. Positive, save, go back out. We're at positive now. I thought I had my antenna hooked up, but apparently I don't. Okay, that's fine. Uh, anyway, 
Um, I don't I don't have my antenna hooked up. That's why it's not hitting the repeater. This is this is the menu that you would want for you've got uh, for any repeater operation. Um, frequency, positive or minus minus offset. Uh, power indication is whatever, and then encode. Most people that call me have this encode turned off. They'll go in and they'll set the CTCSS tone as 110.9 or whatever your repeater is, and they'll key up and they won't be able to hit their repeater, but they don't have it turned on. The easiest way to turn that on is hit P3 on your microphone. And then you see the ENC. If the ENC is not showing, then it doesn't matter what you have the CTCSS tone set to. Um, it will not transmit the CTCSS tone until that encode indicator is turned on. So that's it. That is all you need. Oh, well, let me show you how to save it into memory. That, I forgot about that. It, once you get everything set the way you wanted, including the power, hold down your menu button, and you see a flashing number here at the top left. You can turn it to whatever you want. If, if you see a, a number as you turn, you're turning the dial, that means there's already a, a channel programmed into that slot. So we go find an empty slot, number eight, and then we just hit this button one more time. Memory in, go to memory mode, channel eight, and that's all our settings. So we've saved it in memory at that point. So you can go back out to VFO mode and set your next repeater. But your setting is saved in there. So that's it. That's how to program the TYT TH9800. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. If you have any questions, uh, hit me up on my website, grapevineamateurradio.com. 73.